What's up? You're watching the first video in a series on the operation of Sugarbytes Aprilo. Over the next 10 videos, I'm going to cover each key area of the synth, explain the inner workings, talk about what the parameters do, and we're going to make some cool sounds as we move ahead. In this video, we're going to focus purely on the oscillator area, which is where all the amazing sounds you're going to make with this synth begin their journey. Aprilo uses a dual FM engine to drive its sound generation, and if you're not too sure what FM or frequency modulation synthesis is, I'm going to give you a quick power run through. If you do know your way around FM, just take 30 seconds off and think about how awesome it is. We'll be right back. So FM is used to create complex waveforms from the beginning by combining one waveform, which is called the carrier, with another waveform, which is called the modulator. The modulator is always at a ratio of the carrier signal's frequency and moves super, super fast, modulating the pitch of the carrier waveform. It's kind of like if you assign an LFO to the pitch, however, it's going so fast that your brain can't really pick up the vibrato and instead you hear a, you, you hear a totally new sound. I'm sure we've all attached an LFO to the pitch and cranked up the speed before. Think of it like that, but supercharged and super synced. It goes beyond the point of vibrato and into the realm of weird and wonderful new sound oscillation. So the main two knobs for each operator are the FM and the ratio. The FM controls the intensity or amount between the modulator and the carrier wave. By bringing the FM fader up, we're modulating the ratio amount, which happens to be set on 1, so it's modulating at the same frequency as the carrier. As we bring the FM fader up more, the percentage of modulation increases, all the way up to 100%, but let's bring it down and try changing the ratio amount and modulate the carrier with a faster waveform. You'll hear it kind of becomes a, a tonal sound because the frequencies of the waves are getting mathematically out of sync. This type of unpitched sound can be great starting points for soundscapes and audio that has lots of emotion but no real melodic structure. If you're after that melodic structure, you can switch the ratio to quantize mode with this button up here. When this is enabled, it only selects ratios that have some kind of relationship with the original carrier frequency, meaning more tuned sounds. You'll see as I move it up, now it's skipping certain numbers that it knows will create sounds that won't sound good pitched. That can still get quite crazy as we bring it up higher, but it still has mathematical agreements with the carrier, so if you're looking for more melodic sound, Quantize is for you. There is one more ratio mode up here, and that's the harmonic mode. You'll see now that the numbers are quite specific, because these have been designed especially to create good, solid sounding tones. There's 40 of these, and each one can really drastically change the sound. I should also quickly mention here that the ratio and FM have selectable targets over in the orbiter, so you can specify which parameters you want to mess with, but we'll get into that in a later video. So, as I said, this is a dual FM setup. We can have not one, but two of these going at the same time. They can play together independently, which is algorithm 1, or you can get them interacting and talking with each other by using algorithm 2 and algorithm 3. Firstly, just make sure that if you're using algorithm 1, take note of the op balance fader over on the right, which allows you to mix between the two operators. If you're using algorithm 2 and 3, which I'll explain in a moment, you may want to move this slider all the way up or down just to have one operator playing audio, while the other operator is used as a tool to shape the other one's sound. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at the other modes. Algorithm 2 will make operator 1 modulate operator 2's carrier, and operator 2's ratio is applied to operator 1. Algorithm 3 has operator 1 modulating operator 2, however both ratios are added and applied to operator 1's modulator. I find it quite fun later down the sound design path to quickly click between these as they can suddenly change the entire sound into something totally new. Next to the algorithm we have our simple detuning options. These are so you can change the global tuning of the synth up or down in semitones or in a smaller resolution if needed. Okay, let's jump right over the shift and LFO area and have a look at the form, jitter and brightness. The form dial can control two functions at once on each operator. You can choose what it controls by opening up the modulation controls below the form fader. The format option works as if a sync oscillator is being applied to the chosen operator, meaning the overall spectrum gets higher or lower depending on the direction you move the fader. The shaper narrows the sine curve of the operator as you move the slider up and broadens it as you move the slider down, both resulting in a higher spectrum. 
We have a fold dial also which boosts the waveform and then sends it through a sine function which wraps the wave around, resulting in some harsh sounds. I personally love playing with this when I'm writing really dirty bass lines. It adds lots of grime and grunt and you can morph it around and get lots of character. It's worth noting that these parameters are directly affecting things that are happening in the core of the FM engine. So as you use them to deform the sound, it directly impacts the current operator FM, ratio and algorithm setup you have configured, which is just yet another crazy way to morph and route the sound, and we haven't even gotten past the core oscillators yet. Next we have the jitter. You might recognise this from other Sugarbytes products, it's a simple yet powerful way to turn a sound from normal to textural just by moving a slider. As you move it up, it starts adding more intense random frequencies to each wave cycle, giving it an eerie, jumpy kind of feeling. As you move it right up, the random frequencies get really intense and you end up with things jumping all over the place, and sometimes it even turns itself into noise. I really like using the jitter along with a nice lush reverb, it's a really sure way to get a spooky sound every time without fail. Next is the brightness dial. This is a self-modulation parameter which modulates by feedback, turning the spectrum towards a sawtooth, and that includes all of its harmonics. Use this to transform your sound into something that sounds a little bit more like a classic synth with a bit more brightness, as it also has a self-modulating FM. So there's your synth engine. That's the starting point, and we've already got some of the most complex wave shaping modulation options I've personally ever come across. I think you'll find it's a little bit different than your average saw or square waveform. Alright, I'm not going to lie to you, that's not even touching on the madness we could do with this machine, because each one of these faders actually contains 16 unison voices, with each one being, yep, you guessed it, modulatable. By opening up the modulation tab under each fader, we have some super powerful tools that let us shift, morph, slide, glide, pulsate, gravitate each individual voice. And when I say gravitate, I literally mean gravitate, there's a gravitation parameter. So if you're in modulation overload mode right now, I suggest taking a quick 5 minute break before watching the next video, make a cup of tea, have some deep breaths, and get ready because we're gonna go deep. My name's Tom Cosm and this is Sugar Bites Upper Low.